Hey guys, welcome to our first session of Real Talk. In this three-week series, we'll be covering the topic of self-identity. What is your purpose? What is your worth? What do you mean to God and why does he care so much about you? So before we talk about anything else, I just want to lay the foundation for two things. One, God's existence, and two, the Bible. So first, God's existence, just very briefly. And if you have any questions throughout any of this, you can message any one of the leaders and we'll do our best to answer you. Let's start with an analogy. If you found a very complex supercar that is so detailed down to the very bolts of it, and you wouldn't say that it just evolved, right? Instead, you would look for the designer, you would look for the creator or the mechanic to that, that put this whole thing together. Now put that same analogy to nature. Have you ever seen the Grand Canyon? A huge waterfall. Rocky mountains, glaciers, crystal clear waters, flowers blooming, uh, the sunset, different shapes of clouds, the, the, the starry night, right? Everything's so detailed and amazing. Yeah, everything just comes together so perfectly. It's crazy if you really think about it. If you study biology, you would know how detailed the human body is down to the very cells. Everything just works so perfect together. And there's not one thing that's useless. Now, when you look at all these things, have you ever asked who the creator is? I find it hard to believe that with so much detail in the world, that so much wonder in the world, God does not exist, that there is no creator. Next up, let's talk about the Bible. Why do we always talk about the Bible? It's like a manual or instruction book for humans. It tells you how you can live out the best of your life, what the purpose of your life is, and how to treat those around you and a lot more. If you look at history, many of the most influential musicians, artists, architects, and scientists all believed in the Christian faith and the Bible. These musicians would be Beethoven, Mozart, uh, artists like Michelangelo, philosophers like Isaac Newton, even Thomas Edison, the one who invented the light bulb, believed in God. The Wright brothers believed that God created birds and that led them to imitate the art of aviation. Now, if these historical people, just, just these few, changed history for us, believed in the Bible and God, who are we little tiny kids to say that the Bible is fake, that the Bible is a lie? Many of the greatest and most impactful people in history were Christians. If it is invalid and fake, why do so many people believe in Christianity? You know, almost 31% of the world's population believes in Christianity. That's around 2.4 billion people on earth. So if you are a Christian here, I just want to tell you that you are part of the majority. Now that we've laid the foundation, again, this is very, very brief. So if you have any questions at all, you can message any one of the leaders and we'd be happy to respond to any questions that you have. Now that we've laid the foundation, I'll be referring to the Bible a lot more. So starting out, let's look at Hebrews 11 verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. From this verse, we must believe that God exists, and that alone takes faith. We don't see God, but we see the evidence of God. It's just like the wind. We don't see the wind, but we see what the wind does. We see the wind through the trees. We see the wind. We feel the wind. We don't see the wind physically, but we see evidence of the wind. That's kind of like God. Of course, we don't see him physically, but we can see what he does. Secondly, it says, whoever seeks God, he will reward. God rewards and blesses those who follow him in many different ways. You see this throughout the Bible all the time. So today I will share with you one of those blessings. It's knowing your identity in God and being born again as a child of God. So what is your purpose and why did God create you? So to answer this question, First of all, let's go back to the creation of man. So that's the beginning of Genesis. Genesis 1 verse 26 says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeliness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. We can see from this verse that God put us on top of everything else. God put us at the top of the food chain to rule over everything that he created. He created us in his own image and likeliness. And we have a conscious and a mind, 
and we were created with a free will. We were created with a free will to think and feel and have personality of our own. We were created as relational human beings. We must know our creator to know our purpose and who we are. So let's go back to the supercar analogy. The supercar needs to be in association with the designer or mechanic. The creator of the car needs to tell it what its purpose is. If it's built to race, then it would need more of like a powerful engine, right? More horsepower. If it's built just for show, then it would focus more on the outer design of the car. If a supercar was just, you know, just casual driving, then it would just be fit with the casual stuff. A supercar wouldn't be doing the job of a tractor or a garbage truck. They're designed to for, for something specific, to fulfill a purpose that the creator gave to them. This is why it is important for us to have a relationship with God and come into fellowship with him. His word is the only instruction book for human life, to help you live life to the fullest that God has planned for you. Remember, we were created to rule over the world. But right now, as I see in our generation, in this fallen world, the world rules over us with its sin. Now, when we read Genesis, that we are put on top, and most importantly, made in God's image, we share something with God that no other creature shares with him. We're not animals or plants. We were made to rule over the world. And by living out our true identity, we reflect God's glory. We were made to rule over the world. Now the reality is, none of us are really rulers. Our life is full of hurt, corruption, it's chaotic. Many of us can't even get to sleep on time, right? If we can't even rule over our own sleep schedule or like what we eat, how are we supposed to rule over the world? All the lies that the world gives us, all the deception in the world. Because human free will has chosen a wrong way, which led us farther and farther away from God. God created us to be up here. But then because of free will, because of sin of the world, we drop all the way down farther and farther and farther. This is called sin. Why would God let us have free will knowing that sin will enter? Knowing that sin will drag us down? Because what overtakes sin is a relationship with God and the salvation we get through Jesus. Without grace and redemption from God, we will forever ever be drowning in our sin right god created us to be relational human beings we were made to have relationship with those around us but also a relationship with god what is a relationship it is to be loved and to love to have relationship with god we have to first start by receiving god's love no matter who you are or what you believe everyone deserves to be loved if you're human you have the desire to be loved yet This world is so broken and the love that we receive are imperfect or they're temporary. The only love that casts out all fear, that is redemptional, that is unwavering and unconditional is God's love. Now to receive God's love, that's the only way to restore our true identity in God. To receive God's love means that we go from here up to where he created us to reach that glory to witness god again this is our first step we have to open up our hearts first to god and receive his love in john 14 verse 6 it says jesus answered i'm the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me jesus is the only way humanity can restore itself to its former glory imagine that it's like a slide it's impossible to go up the slide If God created us to be this much up here at the top of the slide, but sin, free will, causes us to fall all the way down, we can't climb back up. It's an impossible way to get back up. Jesus was the only way. He's the one and only way for us to get back to the top. He's the one and only ladder. You can't climb up any way else. So let me ask you this question. Are you willing to be loved by God? and start this restoration of finding your true identity. It's actually really simple. You just need to open your heart to him, to believe and to receive. Revelations 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, 
I will come in and eat with him and he with me. This image of Jesus already waiting at the door and knocking on the door. He wants a relationship with you. He's already waiting for us. All you have to do is open the door and let him in. His love is already there. The only way to find your true identity is through Jesus. And the only way to start to discover your true identity is to believe and receive God's love. God loves you so much and is reaching out to you. If you're willing to open up your heart and lift up your faith, then please pray with me. Dear God, I believe that you are the creator and I thank you for giving me life. I want to come to know the Bible as it is the only truth and instruction for my life. I open my heart to receive your love. Please help me to restore my identity to your original creation, to rule over my life, my emotion, and my relationships. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. When my heart is overwhelmed And I cannot hear your voice I hold on to what is true Though I cannot see And if the storms of life they come And the road ahead gets steep I will lift these hands in faith I will believe I remind myself of all that you've done And the life I had because of your son Cause your love came down and rescued me Love came down and set me free I am yours, I am forever yours Mountain high or valley low I sing out and remind my soul I am yours I am forever yours When my heart is filled with hope When every promise comes my way When I feel your hands of grace Rest upon me Staying desperate for you, God Staying humble at your feet I will lift these hands in praise I will believe I remind myself of all that you've done And the life I had because of your son Cause your love came down